Justin. Uh, I'm asking y'all, can y'all call her? She's 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 being called a victim, and I'm asking for her to be, you know, to, for her to speak on my behalf. You know, she she's willing to speak. You know, she's willing to say to y'all that she doesn't feel threatened. I'm not a threat. That's not the way it really happened. Welcome to Get Your Life. Today will be a video, a revocation hearing for Justin Von Zant, and it is a good one. But before we watch it, I want to let you guys know that we now have memberships and it only starts at 99 cents. And the memberships will include early access to new videos, membership only videos and loyalty badges and many more that I'll be adding. I look forward to starting the new lifers family. And if you want to join, feel free to click the join button under the membership tab. Good morning. Now let's take a listen. Um, today, the Louisiana Committee on Parole is called to order. We're paneled here in Baton Rouge at headquarters. My name is Jerry Ledoux. I'm going to serve as chairman today. On the panel today in Baton Rouge, to my left is Carolyn Stapleton. To my right, Pete Freeman. Um, what if the staff here in Baton Rouge um, introduce yourself? Warden Juge at West Baton Rouge Detention Center. Great. Thank you so much. So we are at West Baton Rouge Detention Center, and um, we are here for a revocation hearing for um, under Justin Boisson. Am I saying your name? Boisson. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll just stick with Justin. <laughs> um, sir, um, today we're going to... Um, review some revocation violations and I'm going to have you um, plead guilty or not guilty with statements and then we're going to ask you some questions but before we do that I want to assure um, that we're going through this properly. Do you have in front of you a parole revocation questionnaire that has your signature on it? Yes ma'am. Okay that that questionnaire um, shows us that you are not eligible for uh, appointed counsel. Do you have retained counsel? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, I'm going to read some parole violations, and um, you're going to plead guilty, not guilty, and you can have a statement with each of those. But the statement, if you want to have a statement, you'll need to do that while we're questioning you. So at this time, I will read out. You've been um, charged with violating parole condition number two, which states that you failed to report to the probation and parole office on January 5th, 2024, as ordered to do so. How do you plead? Uh, guilty. I didn't, I didn't show up. You, that's correct. Okay. Um, number four, um, on or about 12-31-2023, you threatened bodily harm against Christian Adick according to offense report prepared by the Everville Parish Sheriff on 1231. How do you plead to that? Not guilty. She's actually supposed to be on here. Okay. Not guilty. I'm sorry. Not guilty. Thank okay. Okay. Um, number seven, you lied about not being home on 1-5-2024 as a reason for failing to report to the office that day, but your father advised that you left the residence upon being told that you needed to report. How do you plead? Guilty with the statement. Okay. And number 10, you failed to make any payments in your $189 um, in arrears. Guilty. Okay. Um, so Mr. Poisson, uh, I'm gonna be taking lead on the questioning. Um, you said you had a statement for number seven, why don't you go ahead? Uh, number seven was that you um, uh, failed to report and lied about it. I was I was I was already gone when my dad got the call. My dad did call me, but I mean I was too far away to go. He's trying to say that my father told him that that wasn't the case, which I don't. But regardless of the fact, I, I failed to I failed to show up. So I mean, I'm, I'm I'm guilty of that. I failed to report that Friday. But I asked Mr. BZ at my hearing. It's like, when have I not showed up? Every time you ask me to come in, he's like, I've never not showed up. You know. But I mean, yes, I, I did not report that Friday. I called him and left him a voicemail. He didn't call me back. He called my father back that Tuesday for me to report that Wednesday. I reported that Wednesday. Uh, he gave me a drug test. He wanted to look through my phone. I gave him, well, he went out and told my dad that he wanted my phone, that I wanted my phone. So my dad went and got my phone. 
we looked through it. He wanted to, to look through it. I allowed him to look through it. Uh, he kept asking me who these certain people were, certain people were. And I was like, he's like, he's looking for Kristen Adair. I was like, she's on the ass much. So he's like, okay, stand up. He put me in another room. He went to the back of my phone and his computer and he come back five to seven minutes later and said, unlock your phone. And I said, no, sir, if I can't look at what you're doing with my phone, I'm not unlocking it again. He had then told me to stand up, put my hands behind my back. I'm being non-compliant. <clears throat> um, so um, you are on probation, parole, probation, parole. And um, you are to submit to warrantless searches during that time. Yes, 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 ma'am. So I'm asking you to look at your phone and you saying no. no I, I allowed him to look through it, you know, as long as, I mean, I, I didn't know, of course, ignorance, ignorance is not an excuse. I didn't know that he could look through it without me around. You know what I'm saying? I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I allowed him to look through it, but when he unplugged the computer and went to the back of my phone and came back and asked me to unlock it again, I told him, no, sir. You know, let me read. I agree to visit at my residence, place of employment by my parole officer at any, any time. I also agree to searches of my person, property, residence, vehicle, when reasonable suspicion exists that I have engaged in criminal activity. And you signed that. Yes, ma'am. OK, yes, so you have to submit. Yes, um, he put that as a violation. But OK, so that's enough of that. How about if we go to number four? where you pled not guilty to, um, I would, I don't know how to use this, terrorizing um, Christian Adair, harassing, whatever you She's actually waiting on, so I couldn't give her a time to, to log. She's actually trying to log in. I, I don't know what time, but they didn't give me a time, but she's willing to log in and say that I did not threaten her. She doesn't feel threatened, uh, none of that. That The restraint order is not in effect. She did file one, but it got thrown out. We never went to court on it. It's like I, and he's trying to say that it, you know, I'm involved in criminal activity like that, and it's, that's that's. I mean, it's not the case. She's, well, she's she's changing her story according to all of the information that we have in this report. She's, yes, ma'am. She's doing a 180 degree turn on um, saying that wish that she no, would, would not breathe and you would not mind going back to prison. Yes, ma'am. She, she's you can call her. You can you can call her. I mean, I, she's supposed to log in. I, I was never given a given a time for, you know, to tell her. I mean, I even wrote the eggs. All my paperwork just says this, this, this May 2nd, but it doesn't give a time on it for her to log in. I gave her my ID number and everything. She's supposed to, you know, she just didn't know the time. Yeah. And we have staff here that are willing, you know, are willing to um, assist in that. <laughs> He tried to force it. He tried to entice her to press charges on me three different times because he said he was going to obtain a search warrant to get him to my phone. And there was a judge wouldn't uphold it because nothing criminal took place. So the judge was like, I can't issue the warrant. You, but, but we have warrantless searches for anybody who is under supervision. I'm yes, not going to open the law with you. You signed those. Yes, ma'am. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not debating that. I'm not debating that. I'm not debating that. Mr. Poisson, um, for the record, I'd like to note that you are a um, fourth felony offender. That um, you have, um, you were paroled in September, and. Um, we have the advantage of having um, your criminal history. Criminal history can play a part in a revocation hearing because it lends credibility to whether we find you guilty of the uh, charges that you were that were brought against you, sir. Um, I've reviewed your criminal history in, in terms of um, crimes against persons. <laughs> Both felony, misdemeanor, and those, um, and they're over 14. And so um, I, I tend to think that on um, number four, that you um, 
based on that preponderance of evidence that I would see that you would be guilty of that. Um, can I ask if my colleagues yes. would have some questions, Mr. Freeman? Okay, Mr. Boyzan. Uh, how many times have you been on supervision? Uh, parole or probation? I've been on probation twice. And this is my second time being on parole, I think. I mean, yeah, I have a criminal history that goes back to 1999 when I was 17 when I first got arrested, you know, but I mean. I, I'm not getting to that. What I'm asking is, so you know the rules of probation and parole. You've been over them several times. Yes, sir. And you did not want him to search the phone. Matter of fact, as he was walking out, I was leaving and he told me, F you and go to hell. I can't win. But I, again, I did not let him refuse to search my phone. I allowed him to search my phone. In my and purse, I, you I accuse him of using your phone to look at porn? Sir? Did you accuse Agent BZ of looking at porn on your phone? No, sir. No, sir. Did you make that comment? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> okay. And uh, Are you serious? <laughs> how many times have you been uh, arrested for domestic violence with this girl? Uh, for domestic violence? For anything, disturbing the peace, domestic violence. Once, maybe twice. Um, How many times has she recanted her story? Once, two maybe times, twice? Two or three times, yes, sir. Okay, I have no further questions. Ms. Um, Stapleton, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Um, you have a, uh, an exceptionally long history of domestic abuse battery with child endangerment. It goes back many of the years. Um, you also have a history of violation of protective orders. Uh, for a victim to file a protective order, a lot of times in their law and in uh, history, it teaches that victims who file for protective order are try to leave their assailant. At that point, they're in the most danger of being killed. And with your history, of domestic abuse battery and the threat that you made to her, that you just see her not breathe, even if you have to go back to jail. And then, like you just admitted, she's recanted two other times before. Um, because as far as I'm concerned, you're a threat to all the women that you're with. So um, I'm going to take the lead on voting today. My vote is to uh, make a statement. Oh, you can make a statement. And if you have any witnesses, did she show up? Did she call in? No. Never she, she, I mean, she, she, didn't, she was never notified of time. And okay. the, the fact that she, the only reason why she files the restraining orders is to give her temporary full custody of our daughter. Those paperwork are the only ones. We look like idiots when we go to the courthouse to try to get the, get the restraining orders modified or dropped because we, we couldn't be around each other. The, the, the re violations of 2021 of violation of restraining order, she called the jail for me to call home to talk to our daughter on September 14th, and I did. We was good for two weeks. When she got mad at me again, she called she called the, the jail, and, and, and they, they arrested me again for violation of protective order. For Every time I called home, they charged me with six counts of violation of protective order. Judge Angolia was like, Mr. Vozan, do not let anybody else get you in trouble. I'm the only person that says you can talk to your daughter right now. It's not that I go after her or, you know, threaten her or none of that. It's always been a phone call that she that she initiates first. The, the, the DA told me she could come to my house and run her head through the wall and I'm in violation. You know, it's like a no, it's like a lose lose situation. You know, that's why I'm saying she she's willing to, to give you all a statement, you know, and, and I can't help it that she didn't log in. But. I've talked to her on the phone. Uh, she's not forced to. She's doing this on her own. She knows she messed up. You know what I'm saying? She knows she messed up. You know, she didn't know how serious this was. You know, she even told BZ to give me a drug test. She thought I was on drugs. I passed my drug test. You know, I, I, I mean, I wasn't doing anything wrong. We had an agreement. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I was wrong. I, I told her I prayed, you know, that she would stop breathing. You know, I really did. I didn't say I was going to stop her from breathing, you know, and she knows that. She's willing to say that, you know, I didn't threaten to her to stop breathing, that I'll, I really, and I'm wrong, for, I'm wrong for asking her, you know, to pray to stop breathing. You know, I really am wrong, you know, that's between me and God, God. you know, she accepted that. I mean, I, thank you. Thank you for that statement. That really, um, I told her I was wrong. I know I was wrong, you know, I mean, 
it's not that I said I was going to go out and kill her or choke her or none of that, man. You know, it's, you know, my daughter wants me home. She wants me home. And it's just. I appreciate that statement. Warden, do you have um, some input? Uh, no, ma'am. I mean, he was put in jail on a parole hold. Um, uh, got into one fight in the dorm, but that's that's been the only only issue since he's been uh, incarcerated here. Thank you for that input. Um, so, Justin, uh, I'm asking y'all, can y'all call her? She's 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 being called a victim, and I'm asking for her to be. You know, to, for her to speak on my behalf. You know, she she's willing to speak. You know, she's willing to say to y'all that she doesn't feel threatened. I'm not a threat. That's not the way it really happened. I'd like to uh, make a motion that we go into executive session. Second. Second. Third. Agreed. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. She was trying. He was trying to coerce her to file <laughs> charges on me. We're going to go into an executive session for confidential information. Okay. During this time, they stopped for about six minutes to discuss the case. And during this time, um, at the top, they showed um, they could still you could still see the video of him. So I just took that snippet out and zoomed in for you guys. Now you can fast forward through this part, but I just want to show you like during those that six minutes. Um, he was like pretty manic. Um, you can tell he was going off and talking about his case. Uh, I just thought it was interesting instead of just cutting it out to just show you guys, but feel free to fast forward through this part. But some people do like to see, um, the behind the scenes reaction, um, while the person is waiting to hear what the decision may be. If you had to guess, what do you think he was saying during this time? Comment down below. Thank you for um, being patient, Justin. Um, no one has attempted to contact the Department of Correction in the bottom of the letter to the offender. It has the information to provide. Um, so we are going to go ahead and proceed um, with the vote today. Um, you you pled um, guilty to three, and not guilty to one violation based on the information uh, we have 
my vote today would to find you guilty of that and to revoke your parole. Um, Mr. Freeman. Okay. Uh, due to your past criminal history between you and the subject, uh, my vote is also vote to vote to uh, revoke your parole. And Ms. Stapleton. Um, my vote is to revoke your parole based upon your threats to your victim and your violations. So today, um, Mr. Wasson, your your um, probation parole has been revoked. Parole's been revoked. Okay, thank you very much. Thank y'all. Um, we're gonna conclude the hearing there in West Baton Rouge. Um, and the time is now 9.25, thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Be sure to comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts.